Number nine, um, anonymous question. Can I be a truth seeker and a good Christian? Is it possible to love the truth more than God, considering that Jesus is the truth? Okay, so this is a great, fantastic question. Uh, some are going to be irritated by it, <laughs> hearing it, but I, I'm not. Um, so a truth seeker and a good Christian. Um, you can't be a good Christian without being a truth seeker. But there's pro I'm just going to guess, forgive me if I get this wrong. It's not intentional. Don't remember. I, I'm not, I don't know you. So I'm not trying to assume things about you. I'm trying to guess things about what comes behind the question. There may be some assumptions in the background of this question, which are the idea that being a truth seeker is going to potentially cause conflict with your Christian commitments. Um, let me say the conflict ultimately is going to be that I am not that great of a truth seeker. Right? We, we tend to overestimate our ability to, to seek truth. And sometimes when you know just a little bit more than other people on a topic, you feel like you understand the topic better than you do, merely because you're more knowledgeable than everyone you talk to. But I like what Paul says when he says, I don't understand anything as I ought. Right? Let, let's, let's, take, let's think about this for a moment, that a truth seeker should before they evaluate all this other evidence, they should also consider the lack in their own ability to evaluate evidence. So, um, uh, I wonder if I could find this text where he says this. Um, no, I, um, I can't remember where it is. I'm not probably gonna be able to find it. Um, Oh man, Paul's, Paul's, uh, man, maybe could someone help me in the, in the live chat? Help me find the verse. Cause I'm just not, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just a horrible Bible thinker. Um, <laughs> but I don't measure people on their ability to recall locations in the Bible and people should not measure themselves in such ways. This, this causes many, uh, many young Christians who are in Bible bees to greatly overestimate their spirituality. <laughs> um, but yeah. Where does, where Paul talks about not being, not understanding things as he should. Somebody help me in the live chat. It takes like a full minute probably for it to process through there. So I'm going to wait and come back to, um, yeah. First Corinthians that helps except that, you know, that's a whole book. <laughs> so I've got to narrow it down. Um, yeah. Paul's just talking about his lack of his understanding and his knowledge. Um, Man, I can't I can't think of it where it is. Okay, so the um, okay, what well, one person says, First Corinthians eight two. I, I'd like us to look at this verse because if I can ground my answer to you here in Scripture, ah, that's it, perfect. Thank you very much, audience of one. I appreciate that. And by audience of one, you obviously meant me. I was your audience. Just, I'm kidding. Okay, so um, let me take us there. There is okay, truth seeker, good agenda with dangers that come from lack of awareness at how good you are at it <laughs> and lack of awareness on the, 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 the danger of knowledge of, of at least thinking, you know, things. Okay. So first Corinthians eight, one now concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge, but uh, this knowledge puffs up, but love builds up knowledge puffs up. This is a danger where Paul wants to remind us of this and, and, and he takes it personally himself as well, I believe, that your knowing things is a danger of you thinking you know more than you do or thinking that what you know is the whole story, right? Like I can objectively know, okay, so I see a car accident and I objectively know it was that person's fault. It was not that person's fault. So I run up to the car accident and I tell them, you're at fault, you're gonna be in trouble and all this other stuff. And what I don't know is like that it's like some teen girl who just got her driver's license and she's absolutely freaked out. And um, she just went through some kind of really difficult issue in her life. And then, yes, the car accident's her fault, but I don't know the whole story, you know? And that's all I'm saying. Knowledge puffs up. Knowledge, we feel like we know more than we do. And then we think, I'm just a truth seeker, but we're really standing on half the information. That's the danger of truth seeking when it comes into conflict with Christian truth or with trusting in Christ, with trusting in God, 
or you think you're a truth seeker and so you withhold faith in the word of God because you have to be open to the possibility that it's definitely wrong and that every Christian is wrong and that Jesus isn't even real. That's not truth seeking. This is like a dangerous type of um, puffing up. So knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. If you know this in your truth seeking, if verse two is, is, is enshrined and like embedded in your mind, then you will have wisdom in truth seeking because you just have to know, I, you know, I, I know there's a question here. There's an issue there. I, I know there's things I don't know though. And that shouldn't make you agnostic in the sense of, I have no conclusions because I'll never know anything. That itself is, is a, is a place of sitting with, um, lack of knowledge like unhealthily, um, like the guy that gets to the intersection and never decides to turn left, right, or go straight because he doesn't want to make a wrong turn. <laughs> like, well, if we know you're wrong now, <laughs> like, you went nowhere. Um, so yeah, th this is the thing that I'd recommend. Um, I see many people digging into apologetics and they think, okay, I just have to be committed to truth, committed to truth, committed to truth, committed to truth. Um, I'm going to recommend that once you know that Jesus is real, once you know that Christianity is true in the, at least the broad sense, you may be confused about certain doctrines. You might have questions about certain theology issues, but you know, Christianity is true in the broad sense. At that point, you need to rest your trust in Christ. It is not wise to withhold trust in the person of Christ because of theoretical possibilities that you feel you have to entertain until you die. It's, it's relational. It's not just informational. And so I don't know if this helps. Um, is it possible to love the truth more than God? No, not in reality, but it's possible to idolize your own pursuit of truth in such a way that you make God subservient to your pursuit. Now, it's, it's not truth that's actually conflicting with God here. It's your pursuit, your imagined pursuit, where you're on a hero journey of seeking truth and God is merely... He's merely like the, uh, the window dressing attached to that. And, and it's like, wait a minute. No, 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 This is, yeah, that can be dangerous. I don't think truth itself can conflict with God, but you could be thinking you're conflicting with God uh, for what you think is true.